well friends this is kishor patwardhan and uh, i am going to further discuss on tridoshi theory in tales in this lecture in the last lecture i discussed how ayurveda looks at the theory of tridosha and how does it take it as a template to construct further domains like nutrition biology intervention therapeutics pathology and so on and that is how ayurveda treats the tridosha theory to be very very important and fundamental i also discussed the ways of understanding this tridosha theory in terms of contemporary biology at a single cellular level or at a single organ level or maybe at organism level how can you understand this tridosha theory but there will be a very common question like whether this kind of reinterpretation of tridosha theory in terms of contemporary biology is it really essential second will this help any any purpose useful purpose and will it enrich the science so to answer this question i have uh, jotted down certain points which i'll be discussing in this lecture and uh, fundamentally i'll be taking up some examples from recent advances in certain areas of biomedical sciences and uh, i'll be explaining how these recent advances are very very similar to the fundamental principles of ayurveda and through this i'll be explaining uh, how tridosha theory can further guide the developments in the modern science and also how this integration of two sciences will help in enriching both the sciences so what i'll be doing is uh, i'll be taking few examples as i told you the one example will be from neuro immuno endocrinology which i discussed to certain extent in the last lecture neuro immuno endocrinology or neuro immuno endocrine axis second will be related to chronobiology third will be from person centric approaches in medicine so these will be areas which i'll be taking up examples from and i'll be trying to explain how these advances are really important in understanding the importance of once again tridosha theory so let me first take up the example from neuroimmuno endocrinology it is also sometimes referred to as neuroimmuno endocrine axis so the recent trend in biological sciences is of recognizing these three systems to be of vital importance in the regulation of different functions of human body as i explained in the last class uh the vata the functions of vata are very much similar to the nervous system or nervous system functions the functions of pitta are very 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 similar to those of endocrine system and the functions of kapha are very similar to those of immune system and we discussed that this relationship is at the whole organism level this understanding is important because one should not jump into the conclusion saying that 
vata is always equal to nervous system or pitta is always equal to endocrine system or kapha is always equal to immune system it is not that way as i discussed in the last lecture vata pitta kapha can be interpreted in terms of different entities at different levels at a single cellular level they would represent some other entities at an organism level they would represent some some other entities at an organ level they would represent some other entities and so on so this kind of an understanding is essential before we embark upon the further de- uh, discussions on uh, this interpretation there are several studies and review papers which suggest an intricate intricate relationship between nervous system endocrine system and immune system these are recent understandings and these understandings suggest that nervous system communicates with endocrine system and immune system immune system communicates with nervous system and endocrine system similarly endocrine system communicates with nervous system and immune system so these kinds of complex networks exist in the body which possibly regulate several physiological functions regulatory functions and also possibly involved in several pathological developments as well this is a figure that describes how these three systems interact with each other here the hypothalamo pituitary adrenal axis has been shown this is hypothalamus adrenal gland this is pituitary gland and certain organs of immune system have also been shown the interactions between brain immune system including hpa axis autonomic nervous system and cytokine inter- interactions with both of these systems so this is how the different systems they communicate with each other and they influence the functioning of each other through different feedback mechanisms and networks this is another paper that highlights the role of certain hormones in immunity especially the protein hormones these recent developments are really very interesting the authors of this papers they say that this means that the brain functions as an immune regulating organ so brain functions as an immune regulating organ participating in immune responses so the nervous system influencing the immune mechanisms is something very important and especially important from ayurvedic point of view because vata is said to be governing the other two doshas that is kapha and pitta neural regulation of innate immunity coordinated non specific host response to pathogens so here also it has been suggested that the innate immunity is to some extent regulated by nervous mechanisms well the next example that i'll be taking up uh, would be chronobiology so in the recent years it has been shown that circadian and other biorhythms they have important roles in understanding physiology and in also planning pharmacological interventions so these are some recent trends in biomedical sciences and this approach is highly beneficial in the management of certain major chronotherapeutic conditions well certain conditions such as asthma allergic rhinitis cardiovascular disorders rheumatoid arthritis and even some cancers 
they have been labeled as chronotherapeutic conditions because they vary as per the circadian rhythms or some other biological rhythms so there are several kinds of rhythms like circadian which is very commonly uh, known as day night cycle then infradian rhythm ultradian rhythm then even seasonal rhythm and so on so our body responds to these bio rhythms and certain physiological functions or parameters they vary as per these biological rhythms many of these parameters have been shown to be varying as per biological rhythms as i just narrated and in this figure it has been shown that how these parameters they vary for instance the alertness or maybe certain hormonal secretions or maybe bowel movement or uh, maybe blood pressure and so on so how do these parameters vary as per day night cycle has been shown in this figure and most of these parameters they show these biological rhythmic variations and this is very important uh, this has been considered to be important even in therapeutics these days because a new branch called chronopharmaceutics is developing rapidly chronopharmaceutics means the pharmaceutical interventions which are planned based on these biological rhythms there are certain diseases which are which have been shown to uh, vary as per the biological rhythms for instance exacerbations and remissions in certain disease conditions in this diagram it has been shown as to how these diseases they show variation as per day night cycle for example peptic ulcer exacerbation congestive heart failure apnea prince metals and prince metals angina even bronchial asthma epileptic uh, seizures chronic pain and so on so several of these conditions they show exacerbations and remissions depending on day night cycle and also depending on some other biological rhythms a new term such as chronopharmacodynamics and chronopharmaco kinetics is being uh, used these days because certain interventions that have been shown to be influenced by biorhythms maybe their absorption excretion distribution and so on so these are certain new developments that have occurred in the field of biomedical sciences this is chronopharmacodynamics similar things have been also explained in ayurvedic textbooks which is very interesting to know the new understandings in chronopharmaceutics and chronopharmacodynamics and chronopharmacokinetics uh, chronopharmacokinetics these descriptions from ayurveda they assume importance uh, in in this context for example in ashtanga hrudaya it has been stated that yunjad anannam before having any food one have one has to take medicine annado just before the food intake madhye at the middle of the meals ante after the completion of meal kavalantare in between each morsel grase grase with the each morsel muhuhu sannam samudgam nishi so these are certain other variables so it has been stated that the medicines they have to be administered as per the uh, biorhythms and especially these are to be followed these regulations or rules are to be followed in specific conditions may be related to vata or may be pitta and kapha and so on 
So, this assumes importance in the context of recent understandings related to chronobiology. In Ayurveda, it is again documented that three doshas, they also show biological variations. Vayo, that is age. Aho, day. Ratri, the night time. Bhuktanam, in relation to food intake. They vary as per Anta, Madhya and Adi. That is, at the end, the Vata is dominant. At Madhya, in the Madhya, that is at the middle portion, Pitta is dominant. And Adi, Kapha is dominant. Kramat, respectively. Pata, Pitta, Kapha, respectively. Similarly, Chaya, Prakopa, Prashamaha, Vayo, Grishma, Adishu, Trishu, Varsha, Adishu, Pittasya, Shleshmana, Shishira, Adishu. So, as per different seasons, the doshas, Vata, Pitta and Kapha, they undergo Chaya, that is mild accumulation, Prakopa, aggravation and Prashama, once again, return to normalcy. So, this, this is a cycle. So, Chaya, Prakopa and Prashama, these are the cycles which each dosha undergoes and this is relation in, this is related to the seasons like Grishvadi, Varshadi and uh, Shishiradi Rutus. Again, this is very interesting information from Ayurveda. This is how the doshas, they vary as per age. So, Vata has been shown in purple color, Pitta has been shown in red color and Kapha has been shown in dark blue color. So, in childhood, Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Kapha is most dominant, Pitta is medium and Vata is minimum. Whereas, the situation is reversed in old age. In old age, Vata is dominant, Pitta is medium and Kapha is minimum. Whereas in the middle age, Pitta is dominant, most dominant and Vata and Kapha are at medium levels. Similarly, the variation as per daytime has been uh, recorded in Ayurveda. Like during morning hours, Vata is minimal, Pitta is medium and moderate and Kapha is most dominant. Similarly, in the evening, the situation reverses. Vata becomes most dominant, Pitta is moderate and Kapha is minimum and at the noon, Pitta is most dominant whereas Vata and Kapha are moderate. This is the variation of Vata, Pitta, Kapha during night time. So, first part of night, Kapha is most dominant, midnight, Pitta is most dominant and late part of night, Vata is most dominant. Well, during digestion also, the dominance of Vata, Pitta and Kapha, it varies. At the beginning of digestion, Kapha is dominant. During digestion, Pitta becomes most dominant and at the completion of digestion, Vata becomes dominant. So, there is again a cyclical rhythmical variation of Vata, Pitta and Kapha. This is as per season. So, Grishmadi means Grishma, Varsha and Sharat. Grishma is summer, Varsha is rainy season and Sharat means autumn. So, during summer, the Sanchaya or Chaya of Vata takes place. During Varsha, it gets aggravated. So, maximum aggravation of Vata takes place during Varsha and during Sharad Rutu, once again, it becomes normal. It attains the state of normalcy. This is again a cyclical variation. Chaya, Prakopa and Prashama. This is the Chaya, Prakopa, Prashama cycle of Pitta. Chaya or Sanchaya or accumulation a mild increase occurs during Varsharutu, rainy season. During autumn, it becomes maximum Sharat and 
in early winter once again it returns to the state of normalcy during hemanta this is how the pitta shows its biorhythms this is for kapha seasonal variations of kapha so in shishira ritu shishiradi that is shishira vasanta and grishma ritu shishira means late winter varsha oh sorry vasanta is spring grishma is summer so sanchaya prakopa and prashama sanchaya is accumulation prakopa aggravation and prashama is once again returning back to the state of normalcy the third example that i will be i will be discussing is uh, related to person centered medicine or personalized approaches in medicine or healthcare personalized medicine or also known as person centric medicine or person centered healthcare and medicine these days after the understanding of human genome and its details several new insights have been developed and one of them is the person centered care pharmacogenomics is the field that has developed of late and this has led to what is known as individualized drug therapy so pharmacogenomics is uh the branch which deals with uh, fine tuning the pharmacological pharmacological interventions as per the information derived from genomics that is how this branch of science is developing pharmacogenetics research network from snp discovery to clinical drug response so this is how the science has progressed pharmacogenetics research and snp single nucleotide polymorphism polymorphism and finally this understanding leading to uh, further refinements in clinical management of certain diseases using drugs so pharmacogenomics has given several insights which ultimately lead to are or are leading to uh, what is known as personalized medicine and similarly there have been certain very important studies with respect to the individual constitution and its relationship with the genomic studies so one of the studies has shown that the extreme constitutional types defined in ayurveda that is vata prakriti pitta prakriti and kapha prakriti individuals and certain biological biochemical correlations or correlates they show some association with whole genome expression and this was one of the initial studies that showed suggested such a relationship and this was another study eg ln1 involvement in high altitude adaptation revealed through genetic analysis of extreme constitutional types defined in ayurveda so again this is based on extreme constitutional types that is vata pitta and kapha prakriti individuals when their genomes were analyzed certain uh, insights were developed and they are considered to be very important as far as ayurvedic uh, understandings related to prakriti are concerned there have been certain suggestions saying that ayurveda prakriti type and certain genetic polymorphism they could be associated with the metabolic variability these are some important and interesting studies one study has also tried to classify human population based on hla gene polymorphism and then whether it can be associated with or correlated with the concept of prakriti in ayurveda again this study is a very important and fundamental study establishing genetic basis for mind body typologies as explained in ayurveda so this is called ayurvedic genomics this is being also called ayurgenomics so a new branch of study is developing in ayurvedic context where the genomics and prakriti 
the knowledge of prakriti are being integrated with this i would like to conclude this lecture thank you